Today we are going to um, go through what we have developed so far, um, kind of do a review from everything to the end because we have a test the next day you're coming. And uh, also uh, just to show you where we stand currently with respect to this uh, semester, this is what it is. Yes, sir. Pardon me? Did I say next day? Next week. <laughs> Sorry, it's already been a long day for me. <laughs> I've been awake since like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. So this is our weekly schedule. And if you look at the topics, we are right down to week 7. So everything that we wanted to cover from the, like we talked about classes with three classes and resources, input operator operators. We even covered the, like how the files are going to be written, written, uh, writ, read and written, and uh, uh, helper functions, member functions, current object, everything. So what I'm going to do today is to literally bring up the string thingy that we created go through it, fill in the blanks, uh, and start from the kind of beginning and tell you everything about it. Uh, it's going to be a boring session. The other class, half of the class, always fell asleep because most of the things you already know. I just want to do a quick review and have everything ready for the test. As I mentioned, uh, you are going to hopefully by end of today, I'm, I'm hoping you're going to have uh, your uh, assess, um, assessment policy coming up. So it's essentially something like this. But this is for IPC 144 that I already posted. I'll show it to you so you see what it is. So you, in, under the midterm test, you will see that it's a midterm assessment details and policy and inter yada, yada agreement. When you click over here, it tells you it tells you exactly uh, what the test is, what, what is the percentage and everything. Uh, it tells you how to do application and code slide and requirement for the test. A YouTube video of how it's done in a lab. Uh, a notice on how you can lose all the mark. Be careful not to do that. And then in here, you have two choices. Either you say, I hereby affirm that I will not give or receive any unauthorized help, yada, 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 and I understand all these things. You check on that one, you're open to do all the things. You can select the second one and say, I just want to either drop the subject or, or fail in the subject. So you have two choices. Over there. <laughs> and if you don't select A, nothing else will be visible to you. So you cannot see the demo, you cannot see the thing. And and the next one, let me actually, the better thing is to, um, is to do it this way, the student view. So this is what you see. This is your student preview. So when, when and, and the midterm test, uh, it's a demo test with an unlimited attempts. And I gave you 90 minutes to do it. Um, for you, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably either, oh, it says it's unavailable. You see that? because I didn't take that one. So when I click over here and I agree to that, so I'm going to say start attempt, start timer. So I'm going to read the whole thing and I understand. Hey, read it. You click, you're signing your life away by clicking over here. Read it and understand it, okay? Because uh, you just don't click it to see, like to be able to do it. Because if you come to the test and you don't know what to do, I don't have time to help you. There's a specific procedure you have to do to do the test. We're going to have a dry run uh, that the lab that we are coming in, we're going to practice it in this lab that is coming in so you're ready for the next one. Okay? But if you come to the test and you don't know how to log in, you don't know, you're on your own. Okay? I'm not going to help you. So be careful. You have to read this. And then watch these videos. So you click over here. It brings up the video. And literally, let me just. Hi, this is the video. Okay. Um, let me shut up the. There you go. What did I do?
Yeah. So as you see it, it shows exactly how to log in, what to bring, how to bring my apps, how to, so I show you exactly how to do the test. Okay. So you see the video tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, you're coming for your lab. You're going to practice it. And then after that, the next day you are coming, you're going to do it real in the lab. If you don't know what to do in the lab, not my problem anymore. I provided the video. I gave you a dry run and the third one. So, uh, so don't think that I'm a bad person. I'm just providing everything and I expect you to go through it. So after you submit this and you say yes, which means you agree to this, <clears throat> then you will see that uh, the demo test becomes available. And you can actually open it and practice what I just asked you. So the test is there and uh, you practice it. So you're going to see all those things happening in the, in, the, uh, in the lab the next day you're coming in. <clears throat> and we have two quizzes too. Remember that, right? So uh, that's that. So that's all. Now let's let's start our review. Any questions before we begin? Yeah. For the demo test. Pardon me. For the demo test. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, very similar to the midterm test? I mean, the, the the number of questions. You know. No, it's only one programming test because that's what you need to learn. The rest of it, you are doing it in your quizzes. Anything that you are doing in a quiz, those are what the questions look like. Have you seen a walkthrough in your quizzes? That's exactly how the walkthrough is going to be there. The only thing you haven't done yet is how to do programming questions online on the computer. And that's what the demo test is. The rest is quiz. Anything you are doing to a quiz, that's exactly what you get in the midterm. Okay? That's all. Okay? I, I hope that explains. But, but the programming one is the one that you haven't done and you're going to practice it. Any other question? Suggestion? Objection? All right. Hello. All right. So we created series of stuff in a utils class that is supposed to be carried around as a toolbox for the things we want to do. Getting string. Um, that get double thingy that does a foolproof double entry, allocation and copying, a uh, few functions of uh, string header file. The rest of it uh, do add whatever you want to do it, to do add whatever you want to add to it. And as I go through, I'm going to add my own too. So the utils over here, all the uh, functions over here are things that to be uh, that are that are to be used uh, throughout the semester and you're, you can literally copy this thing in your uh, workshops, uh, project, anything that comes up. You don't even need to uh, cite it because I'm, I'm giving it to you. If you cite it, I'll appreci I, 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 I appreciate that. But if you don't, it doesn't matter. Okay? And to go through all the things we are doing with uh, with uh, was that me? <laughs> yeah, to, to go through all the things we have done from the beginning of the semester, we have the class string that we created. We created a string class to represent, uh, to create a string variable for us, essentially, what we don't have in C language. We created this class so we can actually use a single variable and hold statements and strings and things like that in it, like we are doing with a regular variable, with all the things that a regular variable does. So what is encapsulated over here? The encapsulation is pretty simple. It only has a pointer. So a pointer holds the data that is outside of the scope of the class. So the class it does not contain the data within. Because of that fact, 
we have to make sure that everything in this class is taken care of by us because the system is not aware where the data is. Therefore, when the class is being copied and moved from place to place, the data will not come with it. You have to make sure you do that yourself. We'll get to it soon. We said we want to be able to create the string class in a, in a way that it actually, let me just uh, bring up the, the CPP file. So, yeah, we said we want to be able to create an instance of the string just as is, like that. We said we want to do that, yeah, so we can actually create, and it becomes an empty string. For that, we created a default constructor. The default constructor doesn't accept any arguments. So when an object is created, we, and we said constructors are procedures, they are not functions. When you call, uh, they are not functions, they are procedures, and you, uh, uh, and they're guaranteed they are called when the object is born. So as soon as the object comes to being, depending on how it's getting created and initialized, the proper constructor for it will be called automatically. You should not call a constructor. Calling a constructor has a completely different type of outcome than calling a function. When you call a function, series of actions happen and it gets executed. When you call a constructor, an object is created. Nothing is called. Okay? So you have to be careful. What looks like a function call is not a function call. Essentially, if I do this, No function is called. At line 7, sorry, at line 9, a nameless object of type str will get created. It's going to be initialized to hello with one argument constructor. And at line 9.5, between 9 and 10, it's going to die. No function call is made. Remember that. And it is extremely wrong, even if you read it in the notes, to create a temporary object to do something with it. It is extremely wrong if you don't know why. Don't do it until you 100% know what you do. And especially at any moment you see reference of current object is equal to a temporary thing, never do it. Star this is equal to a constructor, never do that, even if it's in a workshop. Okay? If you find an alternative, do that one. I'll tell you what the alternative is today. So the constructor over here essentially is creating an empty constructor for us, which is setting the data to null pointer. We said this is the old style of C++. We explained the highlighted area that is after the closed parentheses of a constructor's implementation and open the curly bracket. That area, I called it initialization area. I said in that area you can initialize any part of the class however you wish to do so. Okay? This is old style of C++. They left it over there so you can initialize things the way you want. It is still available. You can have different types of initializations and different types of constructors. But if you wish to initialize everything the same way. You can just remove those things and the version that I'm going to do today, although I'm reviewing, I'm going to change a few things. So in here, what you need to do, you can just, what, what you can do is to just remove the initializations because they are all identical. They are all setting data to null pointer. And instead, use the, uh, the, uh, uh, the initialization uh, inside of the SDR, either use it 
in a new way by putting an empty curly bracket, it means it's null, or your right equal to null or whatever. Any way you want to initialize it, you can initialize it over there. It means in any case, because in this case we are not saying which constructor is doing this, as soon as the object is created, the data is null and you're good to go. You don't have it to have. Of course, you can override that by writing something in the initialization area if you want to. So if you have something in the initialization and you have the initialization in a class, priority is the one you did over here, not that one. Okay? So if you have something in if I set the data to something in here that is not null, I can do that. That's going to be overwritten. Okay? Number two. When you do something like this, having an empty destruct constructor over here looks unnecessary. It's an empty constructor. Why do I write it? The reason we write it is that if you create any other constructor, you're responsible for all, even the default constructor, right? The default constructor is created automatically by the system if you don't do anything. You create one thing, you have to do it all. We can overwrite that. We can say, hey, constructor, hey, uh, C++, uh, uh, C++, system, whatever. I didn't do it, but I know. Please do it for me. So if you say str is equal to default, you're saying, I know I created other stuff, but still please create a default for me. I'm not doing anything in it, right? So you simply say, I want that to be defaulted, which means you create it for me, so I don't need to implement it anymore. Got it? Next. All right, so those are the constructors, and we have different types of constructor. We have a special one over here that we, we separated from others. We said that construct constructors are called when initialization happens at the moment of creation. And initialization at the moment of creation happens in many different ways. For example, if I say over here void show, and in this show of mine I pass a string s, and I display this string, if I do something like this, this looks like a very innocent thing to do. But in here, if I actually have, if I actually show the name, we said that a function call is translated in C language. When I say C, it means C and C++, remember. When I say C++, it means only C++. It's not applicable to C. When I say C, it means everything. So a function called in C language is translated as, yes, it's, trans, it's translated as, as follows. I didn't do anything. I swear it just does it by itself for some unknown reason. It's done as show, and it calls, and it calls the show with strs and sets it to name. So essentially, that's how the show function is called. And because the show function is called like that, S that is in the show comes to being, being comes to being with, comes to being and getting initialized with an object of the same type. Therefore, the constructor, the one argument constructor is called. Therefore, the constructor that accepts the same object. That's a special constructor. We call that a copy constructor. Why do we do the copy constructor? Okay. Why do we do that? Remember I told you these laptops are the crappiest thing and it's just for this to, do, to distract you? Those two guys are like this. This is happening there and I'm spilling my guts out over here. Pay attention for heaven's sake. That's not going to help you. Okay? Anyway, so <clears throat> I'm not angry. I'm just stating the fact. <laughs> okay. All right. What was I saying? See, I'm completely distracted now. Yeah, so copy constructor. So why do we, we are, why we said we need, uh, so, so this copy constructor looks beautiful and everything's fine. Why do we need a copy constructor at all? The reason for having a copy constructor was, 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 not to have this scenario happening. 
which we said when copying happens for any reason, when copying happens, happens for any reason, the data that is not within the scope of the class is not copied. Only the contents of inside of the class is called copied. Therefore, both classes are going to point to the same resource outside. And when, the, when one of them is deleted, it takes the resource away. The, the, the other one remains over there pointing to nothing. Not nothing, pointing to garbage. And when the destructor is called, poof, it crashes. We don't want that. And because of this fact, what we need to do and because of this fact, what we need to do is to actually take care of that copying ourselves, which means we need to be able to hmm, good copying is got here. Give me two seconds. Oh, where are we? Uh... Yeah. To fix that, we need to do the following. We said that we need to actually, when we are co doing the copying, we should not just do the copy. We should say, tell the compiler, don't do the copy for me. I'll do it myself. And as soon as the copying is happening, we hack the code, and we sit in the middle of the, the, the request for, a, for, an, for an initialization, which is a constructor. In that constructor, we say, hey, when the copying is happening, why is it at the end? Oh, is it at the end? One more time, sorry. So we're going to say, when copying is happening, first we're going to measure to see what's the size of the other data. We're going to allocate enough memory exactly to that size. We're going to do that. And all these things is happening in the copy constructor. And I'll copy everything from the old one to the new one. I'll make sure the size is updated and life is beautiful. Now, when one of us is dying, the other one has nothing to do with the other one. And when the other one dies, there is no memory leak and life is beautiful. And that's what we do in the copy constructor exactly as I mentioned. So first, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> first, oh, in, in copy constructor, I'm still setting the end data to null. We don't need to because it's up there, so I'll remove it. So we do the exact same thing. We create a, a new memory to the size of the other data. We copy everything to the, from the other one, and everything is done and uh, beautifully copied. Are we OK? All right. So that's copy constructor. The exact same thing happens when we assign something to something else, which means if in my program, for any reason, I do something like this, is equal to name, we know that this, this operation happens automatically. You, if, you, if you overload it or not, it's going to happen. How it's going to happen? All the assignment between similar types are taken care of by C language, not by you. So all the, the assignments uh, happens with C language. The problem is that when you are doing an assignment, you already have data in the other one, right? And when the assignment happens, it, it's even worse than copying. What's the problem? The problem is that the compiler copies everything inside. Immediately, you have memory leak right at the beginning. And then after that, all the destructor stuff happens, and you know what happens, right? So to do that, we should tap that one. And we know that assignment all operator overloads are essentially this. They are a function. They are a function like that. So as we mentioned over here, this is potatoes and this is potatoes, right? <clears throat> Remember that? Same thing. These two are identical. Number 16 and 17. They are both called to an operator equal. If this doesn't exist, system does its own crappy thing, which we don't want. So we write this one to prevent that problem. The only difference between this and a copy constructor is that copy constructor is, cop is, initialize, is initializing a, a newborn, something that has just come to be the, being. Therefore, it doesn't need to care about it. They just copy everything properly and done. But with an assignment, I have an old thing with all its own stuff. Now I'm setting it to something else. Because of that fact, I have to take in count user stupidity, 
which means SDRA, and I say A is equal to A. These things may happen for any reason. You may self-assign something. You should prevent that. So because of all those things, the assignment operator overload is a bit different with the other ones, which means when you're actually doing that, which we didn't do over here. Oh, well, actually, we did. Yes, we did. So with, with that one, what you need to do over here is to first make sure that you are not copying to yourself. How can you make sure that you're not copying to yourself? You look at my address. If my address is the same with the address of the one I'm copying, we are the same, right? Therefore, I don't do the copying. So I'm going to say, if my address is not equal to the address of what I'm copying, then do the copying. And I'm just going to reuse my code from the other assignment thingy. It's the same way. But that's not necessarily the logic of everything. If we were creating an integer array, probably we had to do something else. Anyway, so that's that. All right. And we set all operators that are actually overloaded. They are exactly the same way. Uh, we set all the binary operators, no matter what, they return a value. So if I have something like uh, uh, full name uh, plus, e I, I say something like this, full name is set to name plus equal uh, space. If I do something like this, uh, let me just save those things first. By the way, what I just mentioned is rule of three. Remember that. <clears throat> so this is implementation of rule of three. Three things you must implement. There are no questions about it. Three things you must implement if a, a class holds data outside of its scope, or we call it class with resource. Copy construction copy assignment, and destructor. And taking care of doesn't mean that you have to implement it. Maybe you don't want it to get copied, like C out. C out is not supposed to get copied. C out is not supposed to get assigned, right? Because it's a unique thing. So you have to take care of it somehow. You can do it in two different ways. Either it is copyable, so you implement it, or if it's not, we can do it old style. Old style, long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, what we didn't want to happen, we put it in a private part, which means because it's private, you can't call it. Therefore, so what would happen, you would create that, and you create an empty constructor, empty copy constructor, and an empty assignment operator. It couldn't happen. Now, they have a better way of doing it that is more descriptive. You can actually write it. Do not implement anything and write delete in front of it. It means the copy construction is deleted. And when somebody writes a code, when I say another user, I mean another programmer, writes a code and wants to copy your string, it's going to say you can't do this. The copy constructor is deleted. You're, tr you're attempting to call a deleted function. That's what it's going to tell you. So anything you don't want to happen, anything, you don't, not just these two, you put equal to delete, and that becomes forbidden. It cannot be done. We're not going to do this. We're going to have it because we need it. I'll comment it over here. I'm going to say over here to prevent. So if I want to prevent, I'll do that. Are we okay down to this point? Sorry, I'm going lightning fast, but... This is a review. We've all talked. We've, talk, we've talked about all these things. Um, that's why I'm I'm going pretty fast. Next thing. Is understanding operators. We said operators are two. Uh, we have two major category of operators. We have binary operators. We have unary operators. These are all member functions. So any overload that you do for an operator is a member function. Pardon me? Oh, it's blinking. Give me a second. I'll pause it for a second. Thank you.
So yeah, as I was saying, all, all operators, all operators when they're called, they can be created in two different ways. We said that operators work like this. So if I have over here, if I have type A, A, type B, B, and type C, C, when I have A is set to B, whatever operator C, the translation for this always is type A operator, oh sorry, type A and type B operator type C right hand side. So what happens over here is that when you do something like this and the the things that you see over here, they all can, they, they, the types are the same. It could be a reference, it could be a constant, it could be a reference and a constant and, and whatever you see. So, and this, there could be a constant back there. So I'm not talking about the qualifiers, but general signature of any binary operator is that. Unless somebody's putting a gun to our head and say you can't do that. When that happens, so, Gun to the head makes the signature what? Type A, operator type B, left hand side, and type C, right hand side. If we have no way of doing it, then it becomes a standalone. Are we good? All right. Next, we're going to go to unary operators. What do we do with unary operators? So if I have A is equal to whatever B, if I have something like this, what is the signature for it? Again, goes the same category. It goes type A is uh, type B operator. Again, this could be a reference, could be constant. The operator could be constant if it doesn't change. Mostly these things change the owner, so be aware of it. No, no, mostly don't. Some of them do. But anyways, you know, if you don't want it to change, you put a const over there. So you may have, you may have a const here or not. I'm not going to talk about that. You know that. If you don't want uh, any member function not to do, not to do the thing. Okay, so, so. And this is for prefix. And you do the postfix one, which is only plus plus and minus minus. OK? That is plus plus and minus minus. That's it. There are no other ones. Then there, it's going to be type A, type B, operator, and the funny int over there, that means nothing. Okay? So that is postfix. That int doesn't mean it's an argument. It's just telling to the, to the compiler, hey, this is. And I didn't even show you this, the gun to the head scenario for these, but I'm going to do it now. So again, we're going to go to the gun to the head version. Why am I compiling? So gone to the head version for the unary one is type A operator type B um, operand, whatever the operand is. That's for unary operator that is prefix. The postfix operator is type A operator type B operator and a funny int. Okay? So these are non-members. Never, ever. I mean like, oh, no, never. Okay? But I'm just showing you if you see some idiot doing it, you have to. Okay. But it, it, has, it has its things. Like, I'm, I'm saying some idiot. It's not some idiot. Like maybe a genius guy did it because they had to. 
But um, remember, to be able to drive like a crazy person, drive, to be a professional race driver thingy, first you have to learn how to drive nicely, right? That's what it is. So first you have to know what the rules are. And as soon as you know exactly what the rules are, then you know how to break them. You break it now, you're shooting yourself in the foot, like with a machine gun, not like a thing. Like you're going to ruin your foot. Don't do that, OK? <laughs> if you have to, it doesn't mean ah, I'm lazy. I don't want it to go. That, that doesn't mean it really, really it, it's gone to the head. I just removed that one so people don't tell me, oh, you're promoting violence. Anyway, so <laughs> I don't know. These days you have to be very careful. Anyway, so, so are we okay with this? All right, so those are all the operators that we have. And we have several examples for it over here. So we said, <clears throat> we said over here, if I want to add something, it's operator plus equal. So if I, if I go over here, something like name plus I can go f name is set to name plus equal Simpson again. Oh, really? Simpson again. And, and we're going to have Homer over here. So, so this, this, what you see right now, the translation of what we have right now up there is f name dot operator equal name dot operator plus equal Simpson. <clears throat> so essentially, these two lines are identical. And that's why we overload operators, <laughs> because holy schmoly, just imagine if you want to do that. OK, Th this is actually perfectly good. It's valid. It runs, because it's the function call, right? But you don't do that. You do that because you don't want to go insane. That's the whole thing about object orientation. This is ultimate reason that you do polymorphism, because you want uh, same things happen in different ways. And that's exactly what happens. Are we good with that? So we created, uh, and another thing that I have to re remind you of is that uh, the gone to the head scenario with operator equal doesn't work. You cannot have operator equal as a non-member. Okay, it has to be member. I don't. I don't think they changed it, but I, I remember since day one. I, I, I've not, I haven't tried try it, but the last time. 20 years ago when I did it, it didn't work. You, you cannot do that. And the reason it is, the reason for it is that uh, the, the, the whole idea of assigning something is to set the entire thing to a new value. And that, by nature, is something that that thing has to do to itself. Because of that, they don't let it be. Um. <clears throat> Anyways, keep that in mind. Um, we talked about, we talked about, so this one was uh, uh, B operator syntax overload. So we talked about many different things. Uh, also, we talked about uh, the need to the need to be able to do something like uh, ut.sdr copy into the name and oh, no, no, not into the name. Uh, uh, into a stream, it, we cannot do into the name. It, it, that's that's way above our pay grade. So, character 
uh, SDR uh, and I'll go over here actually no uh, say 51 and I want to go something like this I want to be able to copy into SDR the name and we said to do something like this to actually make name to be able to uh, fake its identity to be a constant character pointer not an object you need to overload its casting so when the compiler wants to convert its uh, type there is a way to do it and that was here we said operator we put the type we wanted to cast and usually it's const because you don't want to change it um, this the when you do an operator overload the big signature for it is that the big identifier for it it doesn't have a return type because the action of casting itself is the type that it returns so when you're saying when you cast me to this obviously you're supposed to return that so we did it two different ways we said constant character pointer returns the data or whatever we have in data and size t returns the type for constant character pointer it was very simple because I wanted to just return the type I said why is this thing now giving me an error I will find out I did something somewhere ah uh, we'll find out anyways what let me pause it yeah so now it's fixed it was deleted now it's removed all right so uh, so in this one four 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 as you see for uh, the constant character pointer is very simple to return the data but to cast it to size t then I'm in trouble because if it's null I cannot do an SDR len that's why I have to do some math in here I have to do some logic in here I have to say if it's null if it's not null get the size if it is null send the zero out I put that unsigned zero we can do actually size t zero to be more descriptive so that's the casting to the size t we talked about operator overload oh we talked about postfix and prefix um, operator and as you see over here uh, we set that okay let me just go back in here before I continue question down to this point okay so there are two things either everybody already went through this and studied it now they are being reviewed and they understand hundred percent or you have no idea what I'm talking about therefore you don't ask any questions I hope it's the first one anyway so 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 that's because that's the overload of casting that is done uh, or if I uh, so, so uh, yeah so that's that and uh, the next thing uh, we talked about was another special one is to cast the index operator so index operator can be casted using operator index and usually it is done in two different ways you do it uh, with the one that you can actually modify the element so you return the reference of every and each element and then you have another one that uh, um, it doesn't modify why because usually when somebody wants to for example I'm gonna say uh, <clears throat> void uh, prn comma separated comma separated characters oh, okay so comma separated values let's put it like this and I'm gonna say over here a const str reference s if I want to do that and I'll go for integer i size t i set to zero and i less than size t of s and i plus plus if I go over here and say obviously if I is what did I do 
stupid compiler. Okay, so so now I'm gonna say I if I is zero, then I'm gonna say uh, C out a comma. Uh, if it's not zero, C out comma. So it becomes comma separated, and then after this, I want to say C out S I. A problem over here is that <clears throat> when I make um, um, you see it's not giving an error. And that brings us to uh, <clears throat> how many different ways you can do the same thing. When you say C out S I, what I, I, I said this once before in class and I'm going to say it now. When you uh, access to an element of the array, what does it do? We talked about it in class. So the index actually expects there is a pointer beside it, right? Because an array is essentially a pointer pointing to a bunch of variables. So when compiler sees this, it says, okay, S is an object, I understand. You are putting an index beside it, fine. So at left side, it's supposed to be a pointer. And that pointer should be a constant. Do I have any way to convert this to any constant pointer? The answer is yes. So essentially, it casts it and puts that, and it, it's going to work. But the problem is that it's not smart. If I do something like this, it's going to print garbage for me. Because it's the address, it's going to go out of its data, right? I don't want that. I don't want the compiler to do it for me. I want it to be my operator. If that's the case, to force the operator to not to overload and actually call the other one is to create an overload of this one, which is constant. Like this. So you are saying if the uh, if when you say const over here, it means if they are using an S that is constant, call this one. If they are using an SDR that is not constant, use that one. And I implement this one. Exactly like the other one, essentially. So I um, and put this one. It is, there is something wrong with the, like, it's, it's, a, it's a known bug with, with Alienware computers. Sometimes they turn on the fan, they go and pause. Everything pauses. I don't know why. Anyway, so, so, so as you see over here, I'm doing the same thing. Now, what is the difference between these two then? So nothing, literally. But when it's not dynamic, and what is the point of having a string? Because it's going to roll back on itself because of the modulus. Remember that? So if it grows more than this, it's going to roll back. Let's say that the length is 5. If it's 3, 3 mod 5 is 3. 4 mod 5 is 4. 5 mod 5 becomes 0. There goes back. 6 mod 5, 1. 6 mod 7. And it keeps rolling back over it. So it doesn't go outside of its memory. Good. But what is the point of... Like, I want it actually, I want this actually happen like this. I want when somebody has a string of 5 and sets 25 to something, I want to actually resize this to get to and make it 25 or 35 and fill the, in everything between the end of that or to that, to that one with spaces. I want that to happen because that's literally what a string is, right? I need to be able it, it to to be smart to resize itself. How can I do that? Like this. That's the part that is being added to it. So the, pro the nice way of doing it, because resizing a string is not something, I don't know if you want them to be able to resize it anytime you can make it public. At the moment, I'm making it private, just to show you that methods can be private. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, I could say void resize, but I, you know I don't like void. If it's void, I always return the reference of the string, right? So I'll go str, reference, resize, and I'm going to put over here size t 
This is the one that had bug in the other one. OK? So, so, so please look at it to see what the bug is. There was a bug, and, uh, and I left it for them to fix it. I don't know if it's going to happen over here, too, or not. So I'm going to say size D, and I'm going to say over here, new size. So <clears throat> they give me a new size, and I want to resize my whatever I have to the new size. That are, we, are we OK with this? <clears throat> so how do I resize? So what did I do? I wanted to, anyways. Uh, so it created it. Where, okay. Um, oh, there you go. So that's it. So this is where I'm supposed to resize. The very first thing I'm going to do is to return this. You know that, right? So that's the end of the thing. Now resizing. So how do we resize? Resizing is something pretty standard when it comes to dynamic memory allocation. Obviously, we can just just uh, uh, go by. It's pretty standard. The uh, okay, resizing is pretty standard, and I'll show you how. But the amount of resizing is something that gets optimized by computer scientists, not computer programming people. Okay. So resizing is a very expensive thing to do. Why it's expensive? Because usually when you want to resize something, not usually, always, when you want to resize something, a dynamic thing, you cannot just expand it. There's a pointer pointing to series of things. So in here I have M data and I have seven cars over there. It's seven buildings over there, seven hospitals over there, seven patients over there, seven integers, right? And I want to resize that. That seven patients, somebody came to the office, now I want to make it eight patients waiting in the office, right? If I want to do that, I can't just add one over here because this is given to me by operating system. I have no control over it. So if I want this to only even be one more, I have to allocate a totally new thing with one more. But now I'm just going to double it. Let's say I want to add seven more. If I do that, what happens? I have to have a temporary pointer of the same type. Then I have to allocate 14 of them. Then I have to copy everything from the old one to the new one. Whoa. From the old one to the new one. Right? So everything is copied, and I have everything in a new one. So I have the copy of the data. I don't need the old one, right? I wipe the old one out. And when you wipe the old one out, what happens? It's pointing to nowhere. Then what you need to do? You need to update what is the size. We don't need to do that with a string because the size is determined by null termination. But if you, have, if you are counting, you need to update the size. And after you update the size, you need to make the data to point to the newly allocated memory. That is temp. And that's what happens. And when the procedure is over, that temp Pointer, which is a local variable, will vanish. What remains is data with a bigger memory. It's an expensive thing to do. Asking the operating system to give me memory, reallocate, delete. All these things take time. So how much you add to make it efficient not to consume too much memory, and at the same time not to do dynamic memory allocation over and over. Imagine. You have an array of 10 integer. Now you want to make it 100,000. And you are adding it one by one. Every single one, you have to resize, copy everything, add one, next. Resize. You know how long it's going to take? So things like that, the algorithms are very sophisticated. So through behavior, when it, goes, it, when it sees three times you are doing it one by one, you're going to say, OK, it's keep happening. Let me make it three times more. So you add one, it adds 15. <laughs> so you don't have to do it over and over. So these things are very, people get their PhD on this. It's not an easy thing to do. OK? So, but we are just mentioning how we do it in a most usual way. So, so I'm going to do the same thing in here. First, I need a temporary thing, right? So the new size that I want to get, so temporary thing, I'm going to say, what is my temporary? So I'm going to say character, 
uh, pointer, let's call it new mem. So that's my new memory, right? And it's going to be new character, and I'm going to put over here new size because it's null terminated, I'll put plus one over there. Right? So I have the new size over here. Are we okay down to this point? Are we okay? Then what do I need to do? Then, now that I have the new one, I have to copy everything from the old one to the new one, right? But wait a minute, what if the old one is nothing? So I have to make sure something exists over there. So if m data, so as you see, right now we deviated with what we said over there. What if I don't have anything? What if it's empty? If it's empty, then I, if it is not empty, which like that, now I have to say for size ti, so I'm going to say for i set to 0, i, i less than size t of uh, current object, right? And i plus plus, one by one copy everything, right? So I'm going to copy. I could have done string copy. You want me to do string copy instead? So I just did it because the algorithm over there was doing it one by one. This can be done using string copy. Are we okay with this? Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to do string copy. So I'm going to say ut string copy into new memory the old one. But there is one problem in here. Shoot. What if new memory is smaller than the other one? I think we had something that went up to a length, right? We had a string copy that copied up to a length, I think. Yeah, we have a length too. So I'm going to say, what should be the length? Up to new size. So, uh, so up to ut.strlen uh, of uh, new size. Oh, just new size, new size, new size, new size. So there you go, that's better. So it copies into new mem often, so if it's smaller, it just copies few of them, not all of them. So we have done that, so good. Now we have it, uh, the cop it is copied. Now I don't need the old data, right? The old data is not, uh, should I bring the slide back to remember what we've done? No, anybody wants to see the slide back? No, okay. So I copied the old data into the new data, now I'm gonna delete the old data. I don't need it anymore, okay? So that's if, that's the procedure that happens if I have anything. But if it was null, then I don't need to do those things at all. All I need to do now is to make m data point to the new memory. And I have a new size, ladies and gents. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? So that three sizes my thing. But there is one problem in here. We wanted to put space in it, right? Because when it resizes it, the string's supposed to be resized. I have data in it. Empty data and string is? Empty data and string is what? Is space, right? So now that I resized it and everything is done over here, I have to start from the end of that uh, that it was before, which means I don't have it anymore. I just resized it. So in here, I have to go size t, uh, old length equals to size t old length equals to this. OK? So and it's got to cast it anyway, right? Because I'm setting it. So this cast is going to happen automatically. So I have the old length over here, right? So now I have to go for I set to old length and I less than new size and I plus plus. I'm going to say operator or nah, I'm going to say m data. I 
is set to blank. So I'm going to fill everything else with blank, and at the end, I'm going to say m data i set to 0. Definitely, we're going to have a bug in here. <laughs> OK, so let's walk through and see what happens. This resize is specifically for string. If it was an array, I didn't need to do that. Who cares what's in an array, right? When you are having, uh, when you're resizing a string, you have to put spaces. It, you're making it bigger, right? So I'm going to say, uh, so that's the loop. I'm going to say the old length is the one that I had before. Now I'm going to say uh, allocate the new size, uh, whatever it is, it, more or less, it doesn't make any difference. Um, and then uh, I'm going to say if the data exists, copy everything from old one to new one up to that size. So if it's smaller, it will still get copied. Then it comes over here and says, now M data becomes new memory. Now it's going to point to that one, right? Now it sets the I to the old length, whatever it was. And there's a bug in here. Uh, old length, whatever it was. And it says up to and less than new size put spaces in it and put zero at the end. If this thing goes smaller, I think it's, uh, it's going to cause trouble because it's going to go out of its size. So this I over here, you, f you follow what I'm saying, right? If it's smaller, it's going to put the zero outside of its territory. So this has to get fixed in here, which means I have to check to see if uh, I'll, I'll do that. Let, let it be. So there's a bug here if new size is smaller. So essentially, let's put it this way. If new size is smaller, data new size should be 0. Actually, i is going to be equal to new size when it comes out anyway, right? So if it's, so it sets the i to old length and goes up to new size, correct? So. If old length is bigger than new size, this will never happen, right? So at the end, i will be new size, correct? So I'm just going to put new size here, and the bug is gone, right? Instead of i, whatever the new size is, that should be the null termination. So now I don't know if there is a bug here. So I have the resize. Now that I have the resize, let's come to the index operator that we wanted to fix. So in the index operator in here, I'm going to I'm going to remove this and say so let's say it's four characters long. Index 0 is valid, 1 is valid, 2 is valid, 3 is valid, 4 is not, right? So when the length is 4, if index is equal or greater than the size, it means I'm in trouble, right? So I'm going to say if index is greater than or equal to the size of me, I have to resize, correct? So I'm going to say resize to index. Are we, are we uh, why did it, why is it giving me an error? Oh, 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 oh. This, this cannot, I'm, I'm, I'm modifying the wrong one. Why am I doing this here? <laughs> That's the, the, the constant one. This is the non-constant one. Okay. So now in here, I'm going to say m data index. Let's see if it, if it logically it looks, it looks OK. So I'm saying if the size is equal to, if the index is equal, to, greater than or equal to the size, resize it to the index, right? So if it is 4 and the index becomes 4, it resizes it to 4. Therefore, it makes it 5. Yeah, I think it's OK, right? I think it's OK. Let's see if it's going to crash on us. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, why you want to because null is termination in C. So in in uh, in a string, um, I have it here. <coughs> I wish the board was. Let me put it this way. Uh, I wanted to draw it, but I I have to draw it like this. So this is the size you have. 
So this is the size you have, right? OK? And so this is 5. Now you say, I want index 10. What happens? You have to do this, right? And what you want to deal with this one is here, correct? Let's say you say index 10 is equal to x. So what you will have in here will be x, correct? Now, if you put a 0 here, what's going to happen? That x is not even seen because you are putting a stop sign here. Although your memory is bigger, your string is not. You follow what I'm saying? The definition of an empty string is space. If it was an array, you were 100% right. I didn't need to do any null termination of any kind. I had the size. I would resize the size. Everything's fine. I have 50 elements. It was 25. Now it's 50. The 50th one is a number. The rest is garbage. I don't care. In here, garbage is space. I have to fill it with space. Does that, do I make sense? Yeah, it's just I And again, this is not, this is not, this is probably not right what I'm doing. Because I'm doing it on a fly, maybe it's garbage. If you think it, there's a better way, please modify it. OK? So now, I'm going to try this. So I'm going to say name is Homer. And I'm going to say name 20 is set to x. So if, if we do it right when I go see out name, It, it should print Homer with lots of spaces and an X at the end, right? So we'll see. Does it make sense? Do I make sense? All right. So now if I run the program, I'm going to actually walk through it because it's very iffy, okay? So wait, 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 on reference local variable. I had an unreferenced local variable. Oh, yeah. OK. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not giving you a break. No, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry if I'm not giving you. you. Anybody who wants to go, please go, OK? <laughs> Recompiling. Seriously? Hot reload? No, I don't want no hot reload. Stop. No, what I'm saying is if you need to go, go. Uh, okay. You know what I mean. Anyways, so that's main. The constructor is called creating whatever we are creating using allocopy. copy. Fine. Now the moment of truth. I'm saying name 20 is x. So, so it comes over here. Now the index is 20. And it is obviously bigger than size of this. Size of this is, let me see what is size of this. Size of this is... Uh, this is not, and also it's Homer's, it returns the str len. I want to see if the str len is actually correct. So it comes over here, one, two, three, four. It should return, Homer is five, right? So it returns five, good. So five is returned, and it is greater, it comes to resize. Now it says resize it to index 20. So it comes up over here, the new size is 20. It comes over here holds the old size that is 5, then allocates 21 characters, put it in that one. Then it says if data is not null, which is not, SDR copy from data to new mem. So, and it's going to go up to size 20. Well, because it's 5, it's going to stop earlier. That's how that thing is going to work. So new name is now has Homer, but it has 20 spaces in it. Now it deletes the old one, so that is gone. Now it says M data is the new one, starts from five and keeps going. To check that, I'll do this. Add watch. I'm going to bring it down and look at it as it progresses. So you see it's Homer over here. Let's see what happens. So space. So spaces are being added. 
Why did I put 20? I could put 5 over there. Like 10 over there, right? What is I? 18. 19, and it comes out, right? Now, the index 20 becomes 0. Ta-da! So that's null terminated, right? Now it comes out and returns index 20. Yeah, we did 21, right? With, did it set? Okay, we'll find out. Anyway, so it comes out and returns the, uh, that one, and that will be set to 20 and prints the name. Let's take a look. Where is the output? It has the exact same bug as the other one. It is putting stuff after where it's not supposed to, which means I'm going one extra, I think. So in here, it, when I'm saying index, it has to be index. The resize is making it one bigger than index, right? Why is it? What? So the for loop goes. So in so if the size is equal, it means it's one bigger. If the index is equal, it means it's one bigger. So let's 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 see. Okay, now let's see and see what is wrong. So I'm going to run it right to that point. We know down to resize, everything is good, right? So and, and wait 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 wait. Please, just a second. I don't want 20. Let's make this 6. <laughs> so when it's 6, it means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Also, it has to go to the next. The next one should be 0. There is a problem with our design that we cannot fix. I'll tell you why. The problem is that we are not holding the size. We are going after null termination. And I'll tell you why. Okay, I'll tell you why it's not going to work. It was a good attempt. Um, um, it is actually working correctly, I believe. Um, so let's do it like this. So when it comes over here, usually these things, the, uh, actually, I wish I could record the video of doing this right now, but it's here, that's there. I cannot, I cannot put it over there. But it's a good example to show how we do debug in my dynamic memory. Okay? You need a pen. Okay? So let's come right down to here and and do it exactly as what we have done. So now, this is what we have. Seriously? <laughs> um, that's, can you see this back there? So, okay. Okay, so this is M data, and M data is pointing to one, two, three, four, five. So it's Homer, right? That's what it is, right? Correct? So we come to resize. Resize says, resize it to new mem that, why new mem is pointing to Homer? It's from last thing, probably. Anyways, so new mem is now size that is 6 plus 1, that is 7, right? So new memory, 
is 7. Is it 7? It's 7, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's what it is. Now I am est I'm doing SDR copy, so I'm saying data exists. I would say yes. I'm, I'm doing SDR copy into Numam, the data. So Homer was going to get copied in here, so I'm going to have this now. Poor other class. I told them that if you could debug it, it is impossible to fix. I'll tell you why. <clears throat> so, unless, nah. So, <clears throat> what do we do now? So now, now I delete the old data. Obviously, the old data is gone, and new mem is happening. So the old data is gone, and m data is now pointing to here. Correct. And the next thing I'm doing over here is setting one by one from five to six. So it goes over here, just sets one to space and the next one that is six to zero. So this null will be gone, correct? And this will be zero, right? So perfectly correct, right? And then I get out, I return this, so new size is 6 now, and it's actually, uh, did I do it right? This, is, is this correct? So 6, and this is 6, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's perfectly good. So it comes out, and it returns this, which is fine, and returns the index of 6. So I should go 2 more? Returns the index of 6? I'll tell you why. It returns the index of So what it does is perfectly correct. It returns the reference of this one because I asked for it. And it allocated the memory for it, correct? The problem is that. The problem is that when it gets out of here and it sets that one to x, it overrides the null termination with x. So with respect to an array, it is perfectly good. With respect to a string, it sucks because the null termination afterward is not there. Now, there are two choices. The problem is that if you read this, I'm fine. I can return it. But when you are not, the thing is that when you write, I can look to see when I'm writing over here. I need to look. If it's null, I should add one over here and put a null over here. So <clears throat> maybe if I, if I did it like this, I don't know if it's going to fix. It's, I have to sit and study it, really. So this resize thingy that we are doing over here, I have to do plus 2. Where is my resize? Plus 2. And in here, it, it should be plus 1. And new size plus 1 is equal to 0. Something like that. So it always adds 1 when you are receiving it. And I don't know if it's going to fix it or not. but. I don't think that I have to, we have to actually really look for it to see uh, if it works for all cases or not. Now it's actually Homer X, so this is correct. And uh, if I do something like this, will it work? So if I actually go over here and go for, this is ultimate test for it. Size T set to 1, to, uh, to, um, to 7 or 6, and uh, size the i set to 6, and i less than, say, 35 or, or 1,000, and i plus plus, then I'll go name i set to 
what? At sign. So if I do this, it should do 1,000 dynamic memory allocation, print them all out, and at the end, it's going to 1,000. Will it fit in a, mem in a, in a screen? We'll see. And then it show the thing without, uh, yeah. So it's Homer, and it looks good to me. And that's null terminated, OK? And because it did it 1,000 times, just think about it for a second. For 1,000 times, every time it added one, a reallocation happened 1,000 times. Wow, it's hypnotizing. <laughs> I'm like, Ooh. OK, so that's that. So that was a fairly thorough review on dynamic memory allocation. And um, that's that. The last thing I want to talk about over here would be uh, the impossible ways that you have to, you have to create uh, operators that are non-members. To create non-member operators, there are two scenarios that forces you to do so. Scenario number one, so let's do this over here. I'm going to say C resize. I don't know if this resize is good or not. Take a look at it. Take it or leave it. See if it's good or not. I think it's going to, we'll see. Anyways. So now, but if you go to the constant one, because it's constant, it's not going to resize. It's just going to overloop. So it's safe. Now, if I say over here, so there are two scenarios in which you have to create uh, member variable, uh, uh, operator overloads who are not members. Uh, number one is when you have something like this. Something like that. And we have SDR. And if I want to write something like SDR uh, full name, So if I write something like SDR, so if I write something like this, there is no problem. If I say full name, it's set to name plus space. I didn't implement it, but there is no pro Did I implement it? Name plus. Did I do a name plus? No, I didn't. With a, I don't think I did it with a, you, no, I didn't. So overload that. This is no problem. With this, because left side is name, I can simply make the plus the member of that one. So this is good. I have no problem with this. Problem comes when you have Something like, so this is okay to overload, okay to be a member. But if I have something like this, if I say over here, surname or full name is equal to space plus surname, something like that. If I do something like this, now the problem is that space over here is not a class, therefore it cannot have a member. For these type of scenarios, you have to create a non-member variable, and almost at all times, these type of stuff do not return member, do not return references. Why they don't return references? Because the value that is being created and returned in these type of uh, functions, as you see over here, in these type of functions, are not a local are not a, uh, a non-local variable. They are within the scope and they're going to die. So when I create a result and I add to it and I return the result, this result doesn't exist out there. So the compiler will actually do this for me automatically. So if, if I actually do what I have above, 
if I actually write if I write this one, compiler will automatically do the other one. You, when you do the walkthrough, you'll see it, it creates the result, then jumps to return, and then does the result. So literally, it does this. First, it creates this, then adds it and returns it. So all happens at return time. So if you do this, it's going to be optimized to this one, no difference. But again, because this is not a, a, a variable that exists outside, you cannot return the reference because it dies. So that's why these things always return values. The other case that you have that you must uh, make sure that you uh, have a non-member variable is when you don't have access to the left operands class. So if the left hand, for example, is C out, when you do something like this, the left hand is C out, the right hand is that one, you cannot make it a member of C out because you don't have access to its code. Therefore, it has to be a non-member. And we said it's a standard way of doing input and output. Please follow the standards always. As soon as they tell you overload insertion and extraction, first you make sure you have a member variable that iStream and OStream pass through it. And then after doing that, call those functions inside the insertion and extraction non-member helper operators, and you're done. Making these friends of a class, shoot me now. Never do that. Please. Friends, we said, is ownership. Remember? Uh, did I talk about friends in here? Did I say what friends are? No? Ah. OK. Friends in object orientation are for knife in the back only. Friends in object orientation, put knife in your back. You never, ever, ever use friends unless you have to. Why? It's as I mentioned in the other class probably, that, that I mentioned like you, you give the key of your house or apartment to your friend when you're going for a trip and you say, water my plants, please. And then you come back, you'll see your grandma's necklace, golden necklace is not there anymore. Immediately your best friend forever becomes your, becomes a thief, right? That's, that's what it is. So you do not give access to your private property to an uncontrolled logic. That's what friendship is. Friendship is ownership. Friendship is exactly like you own a dog. When you own a dog, that dog becomes a member of your family. You love that creature, like literally, seriously. My dog, I, like, I love her to death. And she's a member of our family. But tomorrow I can take her to vet and put her down. I can. Do, am I her friend? No, I'm her owner. I own her. I own her life. That's what it is in object orientation. When you make something friend of anything, that thing owns you. Done. You have to only use friends when you want to apply ownership. And in future, you'll see we're going to have workshops to do so. So you never make functions friends. If you do that, it means your design is flawed. You, you, you were too lazy to create a query. You were too lazy to create a mutator. And because of that, you made something a friend. But classes and friendship, when you make one class friend of another, it's when one class has total ownership of the other one. For example, an array and its elements. If you want to simulate an array, you create a class called array. And inside an array, you have series of elements. Is it possible to have an element without an array? No. So arrays, elements, existence depends on array. So array should create and destroy elements. Therefore, you make element fully private. It has no public methods. Constructors, destructors, everything is private. Then you make element. Then you make array a friend of element, saying, hey, you are a friend of element. You can create it, destroy it, do whatever you want to do with it. We'll learn how the syntax works. That's why I don't even teach friends. If you see in workshops that there are do friends and stuff, see the syntax, do it for the, cases, for the 
uh, sake of workshops, but friends are not needed at all unless you are you it's friendship between classes and you're implementing ownership okay that's why I'm not even talking about it and that's the whole thing that's the whole semester and files we talked about files you know I, I don't need to teach files I told you files are literally children of I stream and O stream create a file do anything you want a string screen in a file read anything you we are doing from keyboard from a file two seconds there's no uh, teaching over there happening. Questions? So I'll give you five minutes break at the end of the class. <laughs> it's 11.35. OK, are we good? Questions? Suggestions? Be in the next lab. If you're not in the next lab, you're not going to know how to do the test. When you don't know how to do the test, you're going to fail it. Be in the next lab and be on time. Have a beautiful day, everyone.